In this video we're going to take a look at some of the tool sets to enable us to be able to mix in Oro 3D. And so we're sat in front of a... AMS Neve DFC Gemini. Okay, so this is a real desk. So Pro Tools presumably is a, in this configuration is almost acting as a tape machine and your sources are coming in. In what we're about to show now, yeah. I mean, in, in, in real world situations, it's often a combination, but yeah, we're going to show you the full integration of um, Oro 3D in the desk. So, okay, let's let's take a look. So, there's been there have been a few iterations of um, of how AMS have implemented um, Oro 3D, and they were one of the first people to sort of get on board and uh, and really develop for it. Um, the current version, which is sort of which is sort of the ideal point, is um, involves super stem. What they call super stems. So traditionally, on a on a DFC, you'd have Per stem, uh, you'd have eight channels, which would give you up to seven one. Um, so previously, before that, when I was doing the first uh, initial work, there was all kinds of sort of you know using stems together, grouping them up, and there were never enough stems or never enough channels. You could, you so, could so just just to be clear, the stems we're talking about things like dialogue stems, yeah. effects, foley. Yeah. So the uh, the premixes of all the different departments. Yeah. You, and so what's the difference between the stem that I've just described in terms of uh, a dialogue stem, a, a foley stem, and what you're talking about, super stems? So effectively, these are a way of um, organising the material uh, and ultimately giving them a destination, which is the speakers. So um, the stems on a DFC also give you the option to pan. So these effectively, each of your, each of your tracks, in, in normal use, there are other ways of doing it, but, it, but in normal use they are a kind of a speaker destination, ultimately. And on a channel, you can then pan to those. It knows that this is left, that's centre, that's right. So when you pan, it logically sends to the correct point in your stem. And to do the extra height layer, you need to have, uh, it needs to know that your panning is going to those locations, those speaker locations. So presumably it's another set of super stems? Yep. For this, you've got, you know, dialogue one to six, which would be, you know, left centre right, left surround, right surround, sub. And when you pan traditionally on here, you know, you pan between all those points, you send it to your stem, it goes to your speaker as well as to your recorder. To do the other layers, you have to add speakers and they've sort of very cleverly utilised, um, you know, there's, they couldn't redesign the, the build of the desk, so they've utilised it so you can flick over now um, to your other layer, so that's your sort of height layer, effectively. Um, and it means that uh, you've still got your six or your twelve stems, and each of those can now be um, Oro compatible, so you can have the width, effectively. So that allows you to do um, a mix as before there's no compromise in terms of the amount of stems you can record down the amount of stems you can combine at any one point uh, because each of those is is wide enough in terms of tracks you can you can do the full oro um, panning with it and again they've utilized um, you can see in a couple of places there's a joystick um, you can pan on the joysticks you can pan on the logicators and they've updated the um, the visuals here so cleverly they've used this sort of the 5.1 panning uh, visually looks the same, so that kind of makes sense to anyone who's been doing it. You know, go left, you know, that's the screen channels, and you can go backwards to the to the rears. And if it's 7.1, you've obviously got your yeah. speaker placement there. And what they've done here, they've added on the logicator, they've added a, a height. So that sort of bottom, you can see on the left there, um, that, that represents height. So that's a new addition. So you can very quickly see, I think it's a nice way of doing it, you very quickly see where you are, where your panning is for lots of um, your different channels. And um, the way you pan is as before, they've just added this sort of top um, channel. Yeah, so it's just another case. control. Yeah. And the same goes for here. You've got, um, that's, uh, I'm controlling that sort of channel there. And you can see the joystick does yeah. this. You can see the logicator sort of moving mm -hmm. away there. Um, and you can do your, your X, Y, should we say, panning. And then your, if I call that one up, you can do your height panning at the same time. Um, so you can do your sort of complex moves and you can just you can switch that so it's back in stereo mode if you want to keep your you know stereo movements because it's fully integrated you can now do if you're a dfc if you're a, a you know a large format console mixer using the dfc you can do um as you would your 5.1 your 7.1 mixes you can do that fully with this console there's no compromise and of course the automation is recorded against time code so yep. once you've done the move once Oh yeah, it's yeah, you don't do it again. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and um, it's 
you know, it's it's very solid. It's sort of there's no there's nothing new. So then, if you're on on this desk, you know, if you're kind of there's just the 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 self-explanatory the new the new portions of the desk. Now you wouldn't want to do this normally with dialogue. Pan it around like I'm about. Yeah, to. but it's an easy source to exactly. hear it move it's around. But you'll see. You can see on the meters. You can you can arrange this in different ways. But I tend to have you know uh, the two layers expressed here. So as I sort of pan up, you know, yeah. you see it go into there. Yeah. It seems slightly illogical the way I've got it. I've got lower and higher, but it just does. You know, you can have it either way you want. Um, and then you can sort of pan it, you know, into the Voice of God channel. Yeah. And obviously, if you want to do uh, more complex stuff, you're going to grab your possibly grab your joysticks and, and do the same thing. And you can see it, um, it's obviously a bit low level here, yeah. but you can see it sort of going to your stems. And your normal kind of way of working on this desk is to sort of, is to use your stems. And one of the things for me, when, when it, with the first iteration was, you lost, you know, you lost, your st you lost some stems to accommodate this extra layer. So this, this version is really um, fully integrated. So you've, not, you've, got oh, you've got your stem count back uh, and absolutely. you've got your, 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 your new layers. Yeah, and the monitoring as well. I mean, they, um, one of the great benefits of a desk like this is the very sophisticated sort of monitoring. So presumably very easily you can just monitor just yep. the, the various layers. So you've got, again, this is a new, a new section here. This will be familiar to, to any sort of uh, DFC users. You've got your kind of solos and cuts, and these are literally either um, checking for whatever stem you're on, you're checking the, uh, the, the, the speaker yeah, individually. Left, center, right, yeah. Um, and you've got a new height. So you can sort of toggle between lower and height, so you can sort of, you know, oh, where's that sound? Is it above? You check your height channels yeah. and, and cut them appropriately. This is a way of not, you don't have to change your workflow at all. If this yeah, is so the they've effectively done a software revision yeah. for the, uh, the, the, the DFC console. Um, and, and so anybody who's got one of these can have the software revision and away they go, they can. It possibly comes with the later, you know, the more recent hardware. There's, there's yes. a cutoff point because yeah, it yeah. wasn't, I think the first versions we were doing were, pe were purely software based. Mm. And at that moment they were sort of, they were ramping up to the next, um, you know, the hardware processing cards have sort of had to become modernized over time. So there yeah. is a, you know, cutoff yeah. point. The very early ones, perhaps not, yes. but the, the more the recent versions, yeah. There's an upgrade path, I'm sure, if you speak to me. <laughs> <next, but, yeah. laughs> Indeed. Um, but yeah, there, there, there is a point in the hardware sort of um, history where it, it's viable, it's possible, and then it literally is a, a software um, choice, you know, a software update. And because you're outside of the Pro Tools environment, you're not mixing in the box, yeah. all of this steering, all of this control, you're not dependent on the constraints of Pro Tools, the fact that we can only do 7.1 within yeah. Pro Tools. So, so using a, a real mixer rather than a control surface yeah. and use effectively using Pro Tools as a, as a, as a playback device, yeah. you, you, are, you have no constraints. You can do everything that you I want mean, within, yeah. within this, the deck. This, I mean, what AMS have done, that shows you what full integration, I think, looks like. And it's, it's brilliant. I mean, that's the way you want all of your systems that you work on to have that kind of integration. Um, with Pro Tools, obviously they have, you know, they have uh, limitations in terms of that, which which are understandable. They've got those limitations in in, in bus uh, width and and the way they sort of pre post fader inserts. And um, yeah, that means you have to sort of work around those those things. AMS were in a position where they could, you know, rebuild that in the way that was needed, and that's um, that's what they've done. But at what I mean, what's great is. It, a lot of these mixes, a lot goes in on in the box these days, and there's a lot of hybrid mixes where half of it, maybe the effects, is in 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 the box, and the rest is here. And this means if you're doing one of those mixes, you've got a, maybe a lead mixer using this, and um, they can do all of their all of their reverbs. They can use some of the stuff we'll show you, all their sort of um, uh, Oro mm -hmm. or, or, or multi-channel reverbs. They can utilize that in their workflow, mm. and they don't have to compromise in the you know the the, the in the box guys uh, have their tool set as well to do the same stuff. So I mean, you need both really. I think. Mm. I mean, I know these. Sure. You know. Great. Thank you very much. Okay.